Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is very exciting because when I'm filming this, it's September 1st. It's officially spooky season in my world. I was getting into the spirit in August, but now it's socially acceptable, I shall say. Um, but today's video is going to be all about my spooky season decks. So decks I want to use this Halloween season slash going into you know, Christmas, just kind of this dark part of the year. I'll make another video specifically about Christmas because I have some decks I use only around Christmas time. I'm filming in my living room today because it has all the spooky feels in it. I had so much fun decorating yesterday. It was just, it was so good. So, but if you hear dogs, that's why, because they're, they're out here. So, um yes i have quite a few i want to talk about my main favorites here in the beginning and then we're going to go into some other decks that i may or may not use but they are out for spooky season because they're themed around that so let's talk about the ones that i think are going to get the most use or are my favorites so right off the bat we're going to start with my absolute favorite tarot deck the halloween tarot this deck is just amazing. I feel like I've been talking about it a lot lately because it's such a good deck year round for me. And I feel like it's underrated for that. Um, but during Halloween season, this deck has like pure magic. It's just, it's amazing. So I think this will be perfect for Halloween. This is gonna be the main deck that I use for Halloween. It is the perfect Halloween tarot. It's Rider weight, so it's perfect. I can use it for clients. I can use it for inner work. I can use it for absolutely everything. And so this is going to be the main tarot deck that I use. And that's why I feel like maybe some of these other decks might not get as much use. But when I'm wanting to change it up a little bit or I want to do like pick a card readings or I just feel like I want something a little bit different, that's why I have this other variety. But for the most part, this is the deck I'm going to be using pretty much for the next two months um, as my main deck, my kind of versatile deck, the deck I use for everything. I will have Halloween readings. I think by the time you're watching this, I'll have Halloween readings listed in my Etsy. And this is the main deck I'm going to be using for the tarot readings. So the Halloween tarot is such an underrated deck, I feel like, for the rest of the year. But for Halloween, it's obviously perfect. Okay, next up to go with this, obviously, I have my Halloween Oracle. Okay, I shut the doggos outside. So hopefully we can have some more peace and quiet. So the Halloween Oracle, it has these really cutesy Halloween backs, but this is just one of my favorite oracles of all time. And I just feel like it's the perfect oracle. Like I wish that this oracle came out in a version that, or there was another kind of similar deck to this, same creator, same um, artist, but it was just more like witchy themed or just like a shadow work deck. Um, Cause I feel like it just makes it less like appropriate to be used year round with the Halloween themed stuff in here. But I feel like, I mean, I use it year round, I don't care, but it's, I feel like more people would use it year round if it didn't have like super Halloween-y elements in it. Because to me, this is like the perfect Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been so excited to be able to bring it out now for readings because I just feel like it's very well-rounded. It's beautiful. It has like this shadow work, but hopeful energy uh, around it. So just a, a treasure. <laughs> Love this. And then this is no surprise because this is my one of my favorite decks of all time. Seasons of the Witch Samhain Oracle. These three that I just showed you are going to be the main ones that I use. Um, I mean, this deck speaks for itself. In Around Samhain, it's just so much more potent. It has this witchy, beautiful energy uh, about it that's just, it's unmatched. I don't have a deck like this that is as witchy and beautiful. 
um, and I've talked about it so many times, this will be one of the main decks I use in my um, tarot readings for clients for like Halloween themed readings that I have on my channel or have on my Etsy. I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, I like to use actually all three of these in combination. I feel like they work really, really well together. Okay, so those are my three absolute favorites, the main ones I'm going to be using. Now let's talk about just some other decks that I really like. So this one also is going to be getting a lot of use because um, I just, when I think of Halloween and getting excited for Halloween and spooky season, I think of The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's just, it's a classic. I tie it to like childhood Halloween, really good Halloween memories. And this deck is cool because you can, uh, you know, you can keep it out up until Christmas because it's Halloween and Christmas and it has both of those elements. But this just makes like my inner child happy. It, it's so fun and I think I'll be using it for more like fun kind of Halloween themed readings. But I feel like you can get pretty good readings out of this. Um, but I'm going to play with it more because last year I feel like I kind of neglected it. But I really, really enjoy this deck. So that one's going to get probably quite a bit of use. Um, let's talk more about like, okay, this one is also just a favorite, Les Vampire. Les Vampire? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's my only Jasmine Beckett Griffith deck. And I think it's the perfect one. I mean, this deck is amazing if you want to go deep. Um, I love the artwork on it. It's beautifully spooky and gothic and it just, it's, it fits so well for this time of year. Um, and I just really enjoy the messages in the guidebook. I do, like last year I did a pick a card reading and I actually read from the guidebook for the reading and then I, you know, I had tarot kind of surrounding it. And I think when you're using this deck, it's, it's nice to read from the guidebook just because it's a beautiful, beautiful message. Um, I mean, you can read it without the guidebook. Religion, canon, rules, commandments. So this is commandments. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. So this is a really good shadow work deck for those dark nights. Like it's just perfect. I do have a lot of like shadow work decks that I've kept out because I've kind of transitioned and moved everything around in my room and I've kept a lot of those darker shadow work decks out because I know I'm going to want to work with those more in the dark parts of the year, um, but they're not Halloween themed, so I don't have them in this video, but gorgeous, gorgeous. I love, it's like hauntingly beautiful and has really good messages, unexpected endings, surprise changes, sudden shifts, catalyst maker mother father allure desire manipulation so there's a lot to work with here for shadow work so i have a vampire themed tarot to pair with the lay vampire um this is the tarot vampires by ian daniels it was kind of going around tarot tube and i really enjoy the artwork on this but i just felt like i would want to work with it more during the Halloween time like it's just dark and rich and beautiful and I think paired with Le Vampire this will be a very very powerful force I actually I don't know I feel like I'm in the minority here where I I like the guidebook I'm sorry if my like setup keeps changing because I have to keep deleting stuff I guess my uh memory's full Anyways, I think the guidebook's beautifully written on this, but I want to kind of play around with it without the guidebook first um, and just read it as I would and with intuition um, just because I don't know. I feel like the guidebook's beautiful and it's, but it's still a little complicated for me um, and a little much for what I really want to dive deep with right now. So anyways, uh, Tarot Vampires by Ian Daniels. I think these two together will be just beautiful. Okay, so um, 
This is the Jack-O-Lantern Tarot. I got this last year, kind of pretty close to Halloween. It was kind of, um, it came out a little bit late, but I really like this. It has this spooky, just dark feeling about it. It has like all of these skulls and pumpkins, obviously for Jack-O-Lantern, but there's just this like creepy, creepy, unsettling feeling about this deck. I mean, it reads just so good because it's like a Rider Waite clone, but it just has these elements about it that are creepy. Like, I feel like this might be good for like dream work or I don't know. It just has this unsettling feeling, but I really like this deck. Um, I think this will be fun to pull out if I want something a little bit more scary than my Halloween tarot um that just has like this unsettling feeling it's not like gory or anything it's just creepy <laughs> okay so tarot of the haunted house um I pulled this out this is one of the ones that I don't know if it'll get a lot of use because I don't feel like this is a strictly Halloween deck this just feels like a dark deck it has like creepy people in it um, but it's not, I don't know, it, it gives Haunted House vibes, but then again, not at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it gives like a scary movie kind of a vibe, I guess, which is not, you know, strictly Halloween. So I think this is a really good deck to use year round, um, but I have it out just in case I want to use it because it is a really good deck um, and I really like it. Okay, next up, this is newest newest to me out of like these spooky decks. This is the Ghosts and Spirits Tarot. This is, I don't know how I feel about this, to be honest. I wanted it for so, so long because it's, you know, ghosts and spirits. And if you know anything about me, I'm a paranormal just person. <laughs> um, these are the backs. It's just a little bit much for me sometimes I feel like. I just feel like there's a lot going on in the images and it's hard for me to find like my preconceived tarot meanings in here. Um, so I feel like I'll just have to use this in a different way than I normally use my tarot decks. It's just, I don't know, it's a little bit weird, but I feel like this would be good for like spirit work, um, ancestor work. I have a little section on my shelf that's kind of like ancestor or deep work, um, like, you know, with my shadow work stuff, ancestral work, past life work is really going to be fun to do during this time. So I feel like this is where this one will kind of fall in. I don't necessarily feel like it's this fun Halloween deck. I think this might be one that's more deep diving with spiritual entities like maybe spirit guides or past loved ones or something of that nature. Um, it, it's, it has a ghostly feel just because it's like intangible in a way and I feel like maybe that's what the goal was because the images are almost like it's almost hard to see what's going on and I feel like that's I mean if you're talking about ghosts that's spot on right okay um let's talk about these two decks because I feel like these two aren't again Halloween themed but they're darker and you know spooky and some people only use them around Halloween so I thought I would include them in this video this is the deviant moon this is actually very new to me um which is surprising because this is like such my aesthetic it's creepy it's weird and I understand why people use it for shadow work because a lot of the the cards depict like the shadow meaning of the card or like the reverse meaning if you will um and so yeah again just like a shadow work type deck I I don't think this is shadow work based on the artwork necessarily like How do I explain this? I was talking about this in a recent video about how like 
spooky artwork isn't necessarily related to shadow work for me but the the way that the images like what they're doing in the images is shadowy if that makes sense like the the characters themselves don't creep me out or evict emotions that I feel like need shadow work but just like what they're depicting is like the shadow meaning I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody but yeah I feel like uh this will be a really good deck if I want that dark like I want to look at the dark side of something so I guess maybe this will kind of explain why I don't feel like the artwork the creepiness necessarily is shadowy because this is the Triumphi della Luna illustrated pits and this is actually the one I prefer out of the two because I feel like this one is more versatile it it has that same artwork that same creepy artwork that some people find unsettling but I feel like this is just a really good well-rounded deck like if I want my perfect weird but right or way easy to read intuitively um deck it's this one like oh my gosh I just love this it is so me I feel like there's shadow and light in this deck which is I love that but it still has that weirdness to it and I like the colors it's not as dark so I just feel like this is a really well-rounded beautifully you know a beautiful reader type deck so yes so again these ones are not ones I consider like Halloween decks but because a lot of people do I included them <laughs> and they will be like out in the rotation during this time this is another favorite that again, um, it's just a favorite year round, the embroidered graveyard. But of course I'm gonna have it out during this time because it fits. Again, I feel like this just fits in with that like spirit work. Um, this is a stunningly gorgeous deck. It is meant for introspection. It's also meant for spirit communication. So like trying to contact people on the other side or like mediumship type things which you know as a paranormal investigator and amateur one I you know this is right up my alley so love this I think this will be so potent during Samhain for that work if, if you're wanting to contact the dead so absolutely enjoy this one but this is a your round favorite okay which is wisdom oracle um this one it's not necessarily a halloween deck but it just feels halloweeny to me and so i kind of only pull it around pull it out around that time i feel like this will pair really well with the uh nightmare before christmas with all the purple see it has um like yule rebirth it just has these like witchy um messages but it's not halloween themed necessarily it's just overly witchy like it makes you feel like i don't know it's like a witchy spooky witch halloween witch kind of a feel it's not so we have lord god masculine air so this is a really good just oracle deck in general because we have a lot of different ideas here earth grounding book of shadows secrets uh fire so we have the elements Samhain death um magic circle protection so this is just a really good witchy deck which during this time I'm all about the witchiness so that is the witch's wisdom oracle I feel like I have way less oracle than tarot like I just I like a lot of variation with my tarot but I feel like for oracle I like very specific things this time of year okay so I guess we'll just get the other oracles out of the way this is the witch's oracle again this is a year-round favorite but I find Samhain to be such a beautiful witchy time and that it's just so much more potent so I love bringing out my favorite witchy decks during this time Again, just a really good tarot or a very good oracle that is more acceptable year round. Like, 
I guess this would be my counterpart to the Halloween Oracle because it's it's a really good Oracle and it has a lot of really good keywords in here, but it's not Halloween-y. Like it's just witchy and magical. So love this one. Um, Memento Mori. This one is just a spooky deck. It has a lot of creepy things going on. I like to use this for spirit work as well. Uh, mediumships type things. If I want answers about specific things. Um, it's just, it's, it's creepy. <laughs> and I love it. So that is the Memento Mori Oracle. Um, and then I also have this. This is the Illuminators Amulet. It's just, I don't know. I thought I would show this just because I like how it has this like fortune tellery aspect to it. It just has like answers. So it says, you're veering off path, go deeper, unveil your truth. And so I think this would be a really fun thing to add to Halloween themed readings as this like spooky fortune tellery type aspect. So yes. So that is the Illuminator's Amulet. Okay, so these last ones, well, let's talk about this one. This is the uh, Antique Anatomy. This is just bones and skeletons and medical equipment type stuff. Um, and I think it's perfect for this time of year if I want a pip deck, because this is the only pip deck I've kind of kept out during this time if I just want something pippy and I want something a little more this has a very specific energy to it um it's very deep but when I want something a little less crowded on the artwork that is my antique anatomy and then I just have two witchy decks that I use year round, but are fun to bring out during this time. This is the Everyday Witch. I think this would be fun to pair with like the Witch's Wisdom, just for a super witchy, kind of kitschy in a way, like artwork. Um, but uh, it gives very deep readings. So that is the Everyday Witch. And then of course, if I'm talking about witchy decks, I had to bring out my Green Witch Tarot. This one pairs so well with so many of these decks I showed. Like it pairs so well with the Seasons of the Witch Samhain. It pairs well with the Witch's Oracle. It pairs well with the Halloween Oracle. This has a very like, the backs are very Yule, but it's something you can use like all year round. I feel like they encompass, like they encompass the Wheel of the Year so well in this that it just, it works seamlessly in any season and I mean yeah I just I love how witchy this is it's beautiful all right guys so that was my witchy spooky Halloween themed decks for spooky season the ones I showed in the beginning obviously are gonna be my my main uses my uh, Halloween Oracle my Halloween Tarot and my Seasons of the Witch Samhain those are going to be the main ones those are the ones i use for client readings during this time for the most part um i might have like themed i'm thinking of doing maybe like deep shadow work uh kind of a option on there which in that case i might use some of these different kind of darker themed decks but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this was really fun to film and i'm so excited for this time of year it's not even funny um let me know what you guys are excited to use for this time of year i i just feel like this is when i come alive this is my time of year and these are just my favorite decks in my collection pretty much of all time there's only a few ones that aren't here that are my favorites that are just more like versatile or don't fit the spooky theme there's only a few that are like my absolute favorites that are not here so that just goes to show what my favorite time of year is. So yeah, I hope you guys are excited like I am. I hope you guys are having a wonderful start to your spooky season. 
Again, let me know what decks you're excited to use this time of year or if there's any of these decks that you really enjoy. I would love to know your experiences with them. Um, I hope you guys are having a magical week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!